Good evening everyone. I am Dr. Paula Milaha. I am junior resident in psychiatry in Nimhans Hospital, Bangalore. Today I will be talking about Dawa and Dua concept. Dawa and Dua concept also known as the medicine prayer concept or prayer treatment concept. It is one WHO advocated local level policy. What is it? It is amalgamation of faith and science to treat the mental illness. That is how places of worship can play a role in the detection and treatment of mental illness. Now the question comes why? So basically it is seen that the cooperation between the traditional healer and professionals may increase the patient's compliance for medical treatment as they advise patients to continue their medical treatment and follow up while keeping the religious faith intact. And it respects the divine power to treat the mental illness and decreases the treatment gap for mental illness. We will see in detail about what is it, it is exactly doing. What is the need for collaboration? In India, causes of mental illness attributed to the supernatural phenomenon. Spiritual causes of psychological distress were attributed to the jinn, thrust roof, which is also possession, fairies, nazar, a curse put on one person by another, an act of God, black magic, witchcraft. And the magical religious treatment with chaining, giving charms, amulets, tabis, performing elaborate rituals, uh, using mantras, ash, peacock feather, chili, lemon personal sacrifices like baddha, animal sacrifices, wearing specific rings, branding with rods, exorcism of jinn and ghosts, etc. Now the need for collaboration is mainly to reduce the treatment gap. Only 0.75 psychiatrists are present in for 1 lakh population in India. And the prevalence of mental illness is uh, lifetime prevalence 13.67% and current prevalence 10.56%. So almost 14 million people are suffering and only 0.75 psychiatrists present per 1 lakh population. And therefore almost 80% population who are suffering from mental illness remains untreated. Now coming how we can do the Dawa Dua concept implementation. Firstly identify religious places where mentally ill people are referred to traditional healers and priests. Then sensitize the concerned priest on the rights of the mentally ill person. Then sensitize the Department of Health and Family Welfare and Department of Social Justice and Empowerment to the existence of those places like dargahs, shrines, temples where the patients are usually referred for the faith healing purpose. Then we have to establish a link between the mental health professionals and the traditional healers. After that, we can form a network of government departments, local administration, priests and mental health professionals and then train the traditional healers in mental health practices. Not the whole but for at least for the common mental disorders. Then we have to conduct the information, education and communication activities, IC activities within a religious place and then Establish a Dawa Dua center at religious places and appoint trained workers. From there, we can provide free psychiatric, psychological assessment and medicine therapies. And after that, we have to uh, establish a referral and follow-up system for users for continuity of care. Lastly, we have to establish a monitoring committee also, which can be chaired by district magistrate or district judge where we are standing at present regarding this concept. The first state in India to start this concept was Gujarat. In 2008 at Miradatta Darga in Unava in Mesana district by Milesh Hamlai from NGO Altruist. Though the foundation of this uh, um, Davadua program was laid in 2004, and it was initially supported by the government of Gujarat, but later in 2008, Miradata Darga, it was started and uh, it was started from the NGO altruist. We can see in the image, the uh, Darga image we can see. Next state to start was Tamil Nadu, Irvadi Darga, we will come into detail. It was started in 2014 under the leadership of Dr. C. Rama Subramanian and with psychiatrist Dr. Peria Lenin. Other places where the concept is used are St. Anthony Shrine, Puliampatti, Tamil Nadu, Gunasilam Prasanna, Venkat Chalapati Temple, Tamil Nadu, a few shrines in Hyderabad, Telangana, Nagpur, Karnataka, and Sailini Baba Darga in Vidarvas, Buldhana district in Maharashtra. 
According to the NGO Altruist, uh, which is running the Dawadua project mainly, most patients of the project are depression followed by schizophrenia, followed by epilepsy, somatoform disorders, mental retardation and general medical conditions. Now coming to Irvadi Darga. It is located in Tamil Nadu. Many devotees from surrounding villages, states and countries come here to pray for cure of mental illness. Magico religious belief like as we have already discussed that mental illness is caused by the position of evil spirit or by performance of wicked magic. And people also have very lack of uh, information on potential treatment options and strong resistance to the medical intervention is also there. So the religious community which who are also called as the Hajrat was encouraged to learn from peers in Gujarat about complementing religious rituals with medical treatment. In 2014, Irwadi Darga incorporated a clinic ran by DMHP within its premise and started offering its visitors access to the professional psychiatric care, diagnosis, treatment and medication. Patients were counseled to continue their prayers alongside the professional medical treatment and return for follow-up visits to improve their well-being. In the image, we are seeing the devotees at Irwadi Darga. Over 3000 people having mental illness were diagnosed and treated. One third of, the, uh, of them made the follow-up visits. Others were either referred to a general hospital or placed in a care of a newly constructed 50 bed hospital located on the territory of the holy site. A community rehabilitation center under government supported community mental health program was established to provide the vocational training for patients preparing them for integration into the communities. Following success of Erwadi, many other religious communities, three temples and two churches in Ramnath district seek the same opportunity to help their significant number of devotees to find an effective solution to mental illness. Prayer treatment model under Tamil Nadu mental health project can be the inspiration for other states in India and other countries to address the global challenge of mental health issues. What is routinely practiced in the Dawadwa center? So we have already discussed about the outpatient department like diagnosis and treatment, counseling for patients and caregivers regarding the understanding of mental illness, importance of treatment, available treatment services and need for treatment adherence. But apart from that, other uh, practices which are followed in Dawadwa Center are one is education of priests on mental health and build referral network between the Mujavars and Dawadwa Center. Number two, empowering Darga management team for implementing the improved hygiene and sanitation of Darga. Third, community reach out to generate the awareness and educate the general population and key stakeholders on mental Kashmir Valley. Psychological distress is very common in people with Kashmir due to the protracted conflict. They are the traditional healers also named as Peer Saab. Usually give the first uh, Tavis or Nivas uh, to treat the mentally ill patient. And if uh, that is not successful, then patient's family member take him or her to doctor in a hospital for treatment. They are the people used to adhere to both treatment prescribed from a medical doctor and the Peer Saab. So this uh, program is called as a Duwati Dawati in Kashmir. And last resort for them was to come back to the only psychiatric hospital which was in Srinagar. But it had so many challenges like very difficult and long roads, almost no doctor availability, only compounders like pharmacists were available who um, uh, prescribed the medicines and no knowledge of uh, service or guidance as well as the stigma is also present. Now coming to how the Dawa Dua program has started. In Irwadi Darga, there was one fire incident in 2001. And uh, that time, many patients were chained inside the Darga who were mentally ill. And during the fire, as they were chained, they were unable to escape. So they died in that, inside the Darga. That caught the attention of the authorities and public towards the faith healing establishments and their unscientific practices for mentally ill across the country. Supreme Court of India ordered all the state governments to protect and ensure the care for the mentally challenged person in the state in an attempt to regulate these less scrutinized practices. And it led to the conception of the Dawadua program funded by the Department of Health and Family Welfare, State Government of Gujarat under the guidance and monitoring of the Hospital for Mental Health, Ahmedabad. Now, uh, one study done by uh, Saha et al. in 2021, which is on Dawa Dua intervention, 
we will be discussing methodology of the study was multi method research approach was used and case records from july 2008 to march 2018 retrieved from the dawa dua center for secondary analysis of the patient's profile and outcomes 26 patients from three groups nine from dawa eight from dua and nine from dawa dua and six mental health service providers interviewed to assess the perspective so of the patients and service providers on mental health implementation barriers and facilitators here we can see the result total case from 2008 to 2018 were 7149 new cases plus 47596 follow up cases and majority of the cases were in the age group of 25 to 50 years almost 60% were within this age group only we can see in the uh, pie chart Uh, coming to the uh, diagnosis and gender, mainly 52% of mental illnesses fall into three categories. Those were schizophrenia, psychosomatic disorders, and depression. Mean age of onset of illnesses were varying from 8.8 years to 37 years. Now, coming to what was the referral trend of the Avadua project? Uh, mouth to mouth publicity, like relatives and friends, were 48.20%. Mujawars from the Darga was 37.04 percent. IC activities like medical camps in the locality, field visits by staff, and awareness holdings were 11.74 percent. Other referral sources were Anganwadi workers, government school teachers, private doctors, government hospitals, and other faith healers. Now we can see the referral trend of Dawa Dua project. We can see a clear decline in the green line, which also shows the referral from the Mujawars, which decreased over time. and we can see that mouth to mouth publicity increased over time gradually and ic activities were increased during the 2013 14 there was a peak and after that it has again reduced so it means that we have to again uh, incorporate the ic activities more into the dawa dawa program perspectives of the patients on treatment of mental illness so who were only receiving the dawa they reported that they came to know about the dawa dua center from ones who had either previously treated or any of their family members who were treated and only dua patients had the perspective to show a positive impact of religious and spiritual faith on perceived relief from the symptoms of mental illness they shared firm belief that their illness will be cured by the healer and among the dawa dua patients those patients believe that in psychiatric treatment as well as in the faith healing relief from the medication develops the faith and share their positive experience with the others now coming to the benefits of dawa and dua program it is one comprehensive patient centered approach for treating the mental illness awareness programs and training mujawars decrease the treatment gap in mental illness Involvement of members of darga indicates the community participation and they can easily understand context and frame of mind and beliefs held by the visitors. Indigenous sources are used like environment of darga mujawars respecting community's faith. Dawa and dua concept works to provide medicines for mental illness no struggle of for power. Equitable allocation of resources without discrimination. Non-judgmental to any societal views and looks beyond the obvious medical reasons. Mental health professionals are able to create radiating effect or ripple effect into the community and instill the confidence in people. Easy accessibility, decrease social stigma which may arise from the admission in psychiatric hospital or mental asylums. These are the benefits of the Dawa Dua program. Now coming to the criticism. Uh, in country like India, where the religion, caste, class, etc., play significant role, it may increase the superstitious belief. it may hinder the growth of the people's trust on modern psychiatry faith healing places are money minting places which is no different than the expensive hospitals the referral to psychiatric services from mujawars are in decreasing trend over time the reason may be fear of losing the belief in faith healing in the long run and it can challenge sustainability of the concept in future dawa dua team don't receive support from the old and orthodox mujawars challenge in treatment adherence for people who don't communicate further with the dawa dua center do the courier services are available based on the psychiatrist prescription once the patient starts improving they discontinue the medications and continue only dua and they return to the center only when the symptoms are beyond control another thing is the language barrier and cultural diversity present when the patients are coming from different parts of the country and across the countries high employee turnover is there financial constraints challenge in providing uh, 
work to Sakhi Mandal, which is also uh, the self-help group of women with mental illness in the Parivartan Daycare Center due to the interrupted fund flow, unavailability of psychiatric medicines on a regular basis due to the administrative process delay, and inadequate space in centers with no privacy available, just a room allocated in the Panchayat building. And uh, usually the rooms are like uh, one way there is entry and one way there is exit and there are there is a long queue of pa patients and uh, one per one patient can easily overhear the conversation which is done with the other patient. So there is very less privacy, almost like nil privacy. And uh, other criticisms are it is only one way referral from Mujavas to clinic, very less knowledge regarding the faith healing practices and rituals among the psychiatrists, psychologists and social worker team and data management team, non-participation of DMHP clinic team in celebrations in Darga, which led to the strained alliance between the clinician and Mojavarsa, which was revealed from the Darga during the field research. Referrals were mostly given for insomnia and substance use disorders as limited number of psychotropics were available, mostly tranquilizers were available. There was rare communication between the faith healers and the mental health personnel. Now, um, our suggestions will be introduction of model of treatment that integrate the two practices of dawa and dua instead of just parallel functioning with the client centered and need based approach. If a patient inclined more towards a faith healing, their healing can uh, commence at Darga and then be brought to the clinic or if a person is more faith uh, full in allopathic treatment, it can begin in clinic and then move on to Darga. In either case above, constant communication between the Mojavars and psychologists and customization of the holistic treatment plan is required. Thus, coexistence of both can gradually lead to the confluence helping the patients. As well as we have to increase this Dawa Dua program to other states in India. Coming to the update that uh, one center is there, Mind and Brain Hospital, Bengaluru. They have YouTube channel to provide a psychological healing through the Quran and medication. And they are also doing research program with Nimhans at a Darga, Darga to improve uh, community uh, participation and educating the community leaders like priests, folk healers, imams and health workers about the signs of mental illness, health issues and uh, importance of early intervention. Two layers of volunteer training program for capacity building is going on. One first layer is trains the multilingual uh, people educated up to 10th to 12th standard who can understand the mental health issues and second layer trains the community uh, members with required knowledge and skills to help the needy. The phone number and email address is also mentioned here. These are the references of my presentation. Thank you all for your patient listening.